Hi folks, hope you're doing well. Um, I wasn't going to do a video today, but um, yeah. But then I realised, oh, probably I should. There's a few things on my mind that I think I should probably share, because they, they are relevant. Um, well, I've got to do a video for that person to give a thumbs down to. I don't know, really. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Well, the first point, this is on my mind the other day. And yeah i mean does it come across as pretty harsh yeah it does but i'm going to say it as it was in my mind because i think that's the best way to put it across that's the way it came to me um what about knowing your worth yeah if you think you're worth being abused in a relationship then that's what you're worth yeah you're telling people that's what you deserve if you're telling people that's what you deserve then that's what you're going to get yeah because you're going to be telling people that and the people that want to abuse someone in a relationship is going to go yippee yeah you and i are perfect together yeah you like being abused i like to abuse perfect you're not going to attract someone who isn't really interested in being abusive simply because of the fact that you're sending a signal out saying, I like to be abused. Anyone who doesn't want abuse is thinking, yeah, no thanks. No, because, you know, is this person going to be pushing me to a point where I want to hit them? Yeah. Well, because again do they like to be abused or are they simply putting up in, with a relationship where they're being abused what's the difference the reality is really for those people in those situations what is the difference yeah if you're in an abusive relationship and you're staying in it then you are telling the world that you don't like to be abused Now, I think it's probably a wise move for you to stop telling the world that, really. And to understand that, yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe you're worth a damn something more than that. Well, put it this way. I mean, I'm, I said years ago um, that a functional person is never really going to be attracted to someone who's dysfunctional. Well, that's true. That is true. Well, because if you're functional, why would you want someone who's completely dysfunctional? How would that be attractive in any way, shape or form? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, one thing I understood during the um, during that stand is that it ain't about looks. Well, it's not to me you now. Yeah, I'm not a kid anymore. And so, you know, I've got... got I've gone way past that point where it's about looks now I understand it really isn't it's about who you are as a person so yeah functionality matters so much more when you understand that when you're all about looks then you go for someone just for their looks and then you get to know their personality and you think oh crap what have I got myself into yeah <laughs> so of course yeah, that's why I said, you, you go back to my videos around about the 26th, 27th, 28th-ish of September 2021. You'll hear me saying that, yeah, why would she want me? Yeah, Mrs. B. I didn't understand her as Mrs. B at that point in time. I didn't even know her surname. Um... But yeah, why would she want me? Because I saw her as functional. You know, when I first met her, she came across as loving, as graceful, merciful, kind, considerate, compassionate, funny. You know, someone who had a good relationship with God. Not great necessarily, but good. 
someone who understood about the seas in the moment and about the fact that uh, you're supposed to lay hands upon people. That's what I thought she was. I thought she was great. I mean, even when I first met her, that first day, I did a video on the 19th of September saying I was very impressed with this woman. Because I was. At that point, I wasn't in love with her, no. I wasn't thinking about her in that way, no. But then, you know, give it a couple of weeks, I started to realise, no, I'm worth a lot more than that. Yeah, I started, because I asked the question, who are you, Father, and who am I? And once Father started to teach me about who I was, I then realised, but hold it, my, my worth has gone up considerably. Yeah. And now, when I look at the situation, I'm saying, okay, I'm incredibly stable now as to who I am as a person. Yeah. And what I offer now is so much better than what most people can offer. Well, because if I'm right in what I'm sharing, then yeah, I'm one of the only people, as I say, in the area who might be offering it. That's a big plus. But the fact that I'm very much assured in what I'm saying is right. And on the way of life now. Yeah, that's an incredibly attractive thing to women. And yet, sorry to do this, but again, if I look at Mrs. B, I see Churchy. I see that she hasn't learned how to deal with um, problems with people or anything like that, which is very common. Well, it's very, very, very common in society now, isn't it? Um, so a lot of women will be like that. Um, so I'm, a lot of men will as well, but I'm talking about it from the point of view of me um, and a wife. So, yeah. Well, basically, I now look at it from the point of view, excuse me, I'm now functional, and I see her as dysfunctional. Yeah, I mean, as I say, she, she's married to someone, both have got different surnames, so with regards to her understanding, you know, as a Christian, it's shit, pretty much. Well, the first thing I'm going to do, if, I, if I'm married to someone and I become a Christian, I look and learn to see, what does the Bible say? Because if I'm giving my life to God now, and I understand that I was of this world, and the devil is the ruler of this world, then I know I'm going to get attacked. So what does the Bible say about marriage? I need to make sure my marriage is like that. Not to do that, not to care about that. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, I, so I said, you know, around about the time of um, when the eight months was up, I'm not impressed now with what I see. I was impressed. And I still am with the person that I saw standing next to me on that day. I was still very impressed with what I saw on that day. But that doesn't seem to be the person. That seemed to be purely what God wanted me to see on that day. As I say, is that person within her? Yes. Um, but will that person ever come out again? I have no idea. I honestly don't know. Well, again, that may be fair, because that, that might be who she is as well. Yeah. Well, certainly elements of that, yeah. She may be, you know, impressive still in many, many ways. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. I say things like relationships are not easy at the best of times. And yeah. If you're basically in that situation. Well, it's like I looked on her Facebook the other day. And... 
there's now a picture of her and her husband. So you can see her husband now. Then you go down to her friends. Her husband is one of her friends on Facebook. So, excuse me? Your husband and wife. Do you not understand that fucking point? Your husband and wife. What the fucking hell are you doing being friends on Facebook as well? Do you not see each other on a regular basis? Do you not have a conversation? What, you need to talk on Facebook? Or was it a case that, um, uh, again, I, I do not understand that in any way. Maybe it's that point of, you know, oh, I've got this amount of friends on Facebook. I need to bump that up. Would you f friend me on Facebook? And if that's the case, then I'm not impressed with that either, really. Um, but it's like, yeah, he definitely has a different surname. I didn't, I wasn't sure, based upon the fact that, um, yeah, I didn't know him or his name. Um, I was going simply by articles that were like 20, well, when she was 15, 14 years ago. Um, and so, simply going by that, that her name was the same then as it is now and she had a different boyfriend then apparently so therefore it's most likely that she didn't take his surname well now it's definitely she didn't take his surname well apparently according to his name and according to hers they're different surnames so therefore yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well to me it's, it's such a shame that's all. I just see it as such a bloody shame. Because, you know, if you're going to be married, you know, make sure that you have as good a chance as possible for that relationship to work. Make sure that you get rid of anything or anything that you can see as obvious where the devil could attack. Get rid of those things. You know, I mean, nowadays, yeah, the understanding seems to be let's have as many things as possible where we're different and where we're not actually putting together one. Yay! So what the heck is the point of that, really? So Genesis 2.24 says, you're supposed to leave mother and father and be joined as one flesh. That's complete. That's not saying... As one flesh in some things, it says as one flesh, completely as one flesh. That's why I say, first of all, the first thing comes is before you get married, is this the person that God wants me to be married to? That has to be the first body question. Test that first. Test it thoroughly because you're 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 joining yourself emotionally to this other person, and if it's the wrong person, then you're going to have a very very difficult time emotionally worth it I don't see it probably is worth it but okay yeah if you think it's not really worth putting in the effort to make sure it's the right person then okay oh what you get along okay right that means it's the right person for you that means that you're going to pull together in all things that means that you're going to Leave mother and father and be joined as one flesh in all things, does it? Because you seem to get along. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, that, that is the gold star. That is the gold level, that is. You get along, okay? Yeah, marry them. Yeah, good idea. Be joined now. Yeah. Yeah. Be joined to the point that you, you're going to think you're with the right person. And then the first major storm comes and, oh my God... Suddenly you realise who this person is. This isn't the person you thought. Yeah, this isn't working. Oh my God, this is terrible. Yeah. Well, COVID was that for a lot of people, wasn't it, really? Oh, I could see that in COVID. I listened to the videos I did during COVID. I was saying just how terrible it's going to be for a lot of people. Who, you know, couples that never really spent time together before, but are now spending time together. Oof. Well, as I say, I mean, come on. I live, I live in a basement flat. There's a 
but well, upstairs, downstairs house, really, above me. And out of the people that have rented, you know, since the person um, sold the place originally there, but even, even them, uh, Grant and Fiona, they fought a lot. They really did. And he was basically at a point where he wanted to break up with her on a regular basis. Yeah. But then he left and a couple came in. I think they weren't too bad, but the next couple came in. He was working away and whenever he was he was here. God, they fought all the time. Oh, she was... She came across as a very nasty woman. You know. She came across as... But only when he was back. Because, oh my God, she would, get, she would let into him. Really effing and blinding at him, accusing him of this, that and the other. And, oh dear. Yeah, I've been there in that, that sort of relationship. It ain't nice. Yeah. But even the couple here. Yeah. Generally speaking, you know, over weekends, it can be the same. You know, during the week, they seem to get on a lot better. But weekends, when they spend more time together, it ain't pretty. Yeah. It's a common thing. It is a common thing. You know, people, yeah. They look really good when they're spending time apart, but then when they spend time together, they haven't really learned how to communicate or how to sort of, you know, spend time together. And COVID was a time when, oh, they really had to. <laughs> yeah, that, that was quite bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, saying bad, it could be good because if a lot of relationships broke up where they weren't supposed to be together, well then, you know, hopefully they can go and find the right people. The people that they should have been with in the first place. Because that's the point, if you're with the right person, then you do worse when you're apart. You don't do worse when you're together. Yeah, so, yeah. But as I say, really, when it comes down to it, it it really is so important to be putting together in all things. Yeah, because then, but as I say, when the storm comes, you're fine. You're fine because you're putting together in all these things, and so therefore, there's nothing. There's no gap for the rot to get in. There's, there's nothing there. But the problem is, is that when you're putting together on hardly anything, you're putting apart on so many things. Yeah. That is so incredibly bad. It's a bad situation that a lot of people are in, but they don't, they haven't had the storm yet, so you just can't see it. Well, there is a way to deal with it, and that's to um, correct it. Well, as I said about MOT in servicing your relationship, that sort of thing, and you can do that quite easy. Well, you can, you can certainly uh, renew your wedding vows. You can take each other's surname. Yeah, one of you can drop your surname and go with the others. It do does it really matter if it's a woman's or a man's? Not really. If the man wants to be subservient to the woman then yeah he can drop his surname and take hers but at least you're being in one on that thing if you want to be all left wing then you can do that yeah you can do it that way and there's there's been quite a few men who've probably done that haven't they taking a woman's surname yeah well for different reasons i mean if you're in a family where you really can't stand your family then dropping your surname is quite a thing you well, you want to do. So a lot of men would have dropped their surname in those sort of circumstances. That's right. Cool. Yeah. I'm not going to argue with it. I don't care. I don't, God couldn't care less. They've actually, yeah, at least they're not living separately, but together. Yeah. On that one thing, they're living together, aren't they? 
So that's good. Yeah. Yeah. I do a lot of videos talking about relationships because what is the most important thing to people? Your relationship with God and your relationship with people. Relationships are more important than anything else, aren't they, really? Yeah. And if they're that important, then we better make sure we get them right. And if they're not right, then, okay, make the adjustments you need to make. And a lot of the adjustments are quite simple to make, really, you know. If you're not putting together on all things, then, okay, what you're not putting together on, okay, what can we do about that? Right, okay. Fixed. There you go. Simple, really. Not too difficult, is it, really? No, I mean, in the end... But there are people that I like and there are people that I don't like. Do I want any of these people to have their relationship ex explode? And for them to go down that, that path of you know, losing a relationship in a horrible way? No. I've been there and I know what it's like, so no. I don't want anyone to go through that. It's a horrible thing to go through. But, I mean, most people don't have to go through that. But as I say, yeah, some people are married to the wrong people and they need to divorce because they are married to the wrong people and it won't work. Well, if that's the case, okay. If you got married quickly, you can divorce quickly, can't you? Well, as I say, I mean, yeah. If the understanding is that not anybody separate you know, a couple that God has joined together, that's only relevant to a couple that God has joined together. If man joined this couple together, as it were the man and the woman, if they decided without being led by God, or without being guided by God, or without um, really taking notice of God in, in that thing, then was it God who did it? There should be evidence of that. Although, yeah, okay. I've said about there should be evidence of fruit in your life, but there isn't. Evidence is hard to come by nowadays. I understand that. I do understand that. But I, I, I also think that you can see when there's a good marriage and when you can see when there's a bad marriage. You can see the differences. Although... There are some good marriages that are going through bad patches. And bad marriages that are going through good patches. So, yeah. You're the only one who knows. If you're in a relationship, you know whether that relationship... Deep down, you do. You know whether that relationship is good or not. Yeah, I mean, really good. Yeah. But as I say, that's based around being honest with yourself got to do that if you're not honest with yourself then you're not really going to know whether the relationship is good are you not really so there you go yeah, it is what it is just another relationship subject I suppose but um, well going back to the start of this you know, know your worth that's part of it know your worth and if you understand your worth and you understand that you've actually been saying you're worth nothing, well then understand that you're not worth nothing. You're worth a damn something more than that. And start living according to that. Stop putting up with relationships that are abusive towards you. Be you man or female, it doesn't matter. Yeah, when you have a chance to get out, get out. If you're in a relationship like that, get out. Because certainly with regards to relationships like that, if you're in a relationship with someone who is abusive towards you, chances are they will continue to be abusive towards you in the future if you stay with them.
you know, so end the relationship. It doesn't mean you can't get back together, but it does mean that they have to do a lot of work to prove to you that they're not going to keep behaving in that way. Yeah, them saying they won't, not enough. And if you're in a relationship that is okay, that's doing okay, then the same question. Is that all you're worth? And it's not about saying you're so special, but it is about saying, really, according to yourself, is that all you're worth? Because if you're worth more, then make it more. There you go. You take care. God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Have a fantastic week next week. And, yeah. Enjoy. And do the work you need to do in your life, and your relationships with God and with each other. You take care. God bless. I'll speak to you soon. Bye-bye.